Now, we briefly mentioned music and singing. You play the viola, I believe. I um, I play viola for Jessica Law. I'm one of her outlaws. So, again, if people are familiar with her, look her up on, on YouTube. She does a lot of um, mythologically informed material. Angry Women in the Sea, it's particularly <laughs> mermaids, clowns, um, other, other beings in the sea who are angry. Um, yeah, she's great fun, and I've been working with her for more than a year at this point, and she's doing gigging and stuff, so that's fun. I've just got back into playing violin, having been stuck with a shoulder injury. Um, I got a compression injury for a very large cat who spent his last winter on my shoulder, um, and just crushed my shoulder blood so I couldn't play anymore, but this year I've got the violin back, I can kind of get around it. Um, which is very exciting. So I'm currently playing a bit with my partner Keith, and I'm playing a little bit with a band called Swing Riot, and it's you know, they are a lot of fun. And and I've also because clearly that's that's three projects I did up. Um, I've got a little outfit that sings low key called Carnival of Cryptids, and that's kind of a community choir only with far less organising. So it's a bit anarchic. Um, and a weeding like local fairy events and you can dress up and stuff. So it's, it's and again, it's another excuse to uh, to stick a ridiculous hat on and get the antlers out. <laughs> yeah. Which everyone should do on the weekend. Absolutely. <laughs> and and getting out in the streets of Gloucester with the antlers on and all the rest of it, just bemusing normal people, which I think it's really good for. <laughs> I have seen some of the photos. Okay. No. <laughs> I can confirm. The songs that you sing, do you write your own songs? Is there a lot of it your own stuff? Sometimes. I mean, again, I grew up in the folk tradition, so I sing quite a lot of traditional material. I do pick up things from singer-songwriters. Obviously, I sing for Dave stuff because Mr. The Bard is it's if necessary. Uh, Jessica is a songwriter, so and, and actually so is Keith, so we do quite a lot of their material. I do write songs sometimes. Um, usually, if there's there's one that's needed for something and I can't find something to steal, I'll I'll just knock it down and try and write something of the job. But it's not it's not what my brain tends to default to if um, if I'm writing. Um, I'm more likely to think in terms of, of poems or stories, just where my head goes. So, I yeah. think folk stories, though folk stories, folk songs, we can learn a lot from too, can't we? Yeah. They are enjoyable obviously yeah. but i think there's a lot of knowledge to be found in them too yeah and there's there's a lot of folk magic that's caught up in that and mm. obviously that kind of if you want to connect with your ancestors singing their songs is a really easy way to kind of get to know them and, and make them real in your life that's that's definitely it. i love stories connected with the landscape so um uh that's something that that I'm passionate by, and I live in a very story rich landscape, which helps. And um, there's a lot of uh, history and folklore that she's great. Um, I also find it really interesting kind of going to places and singing the songs that are associated with the place, um, if I can get away without bothering anyone too much. Um, and that, could, that can be really interesting just as a, a way of connecting with the landscape. And then there's a point. Hadrian's Wall earlier in the year, and you know, I've got some West Ambulance song, and I've got some Layman songs, and obviously not on the actual Layman's, but stuff written about it. And to take that into the place where it's relevant, it's just it's just a really interesting way of making those connections. It's a very good but it's definitely worth exploring. And most places have some local songs, but some local story, but it's just a book. Yeah. I think it's important. I think it's important wherever you live to find out your local stories well, and history. It, yeah. It's a connection, isn't it? It's about connecting yeah. to the land that you live on. Yeah, and, and the feeling of belonging that comes from kind of having mm -hmm. those days in you and being in the land that they're in. It, yeah, it's it's a very particular kind of magic, but I think it's an important thing to have. Not that I'm going to sing because that would scare people off. <laughs> Not point. one of my talents. We've done a lot of voice workshops over the years um, at events. Um, I've run a lot of singing groups and singing spaces. Every time I do it, I have this conversation with somebody who says, oh, you know, I can't. I feel told I can't. I shouldn't. Two people in my entire life, I genuinely would have said, honestly, maybe not. But most people can't sing, and they've just been told that they shouldn't. And usually told when they're the kids, which is ridiculous because children don't know how to do stuff. 
number of guys who've been told as teenagers. It's like, no, things happen to guys when they're teenagers. Look, there's one thing on the we don't think at all. Most people can sing, and it's a wonderful, joyful thing. And it doesn't matter if you're not very good, because there's always sea chances and punk anyway. Um, sing. So, <laughs> Wait, wait. No, don't. <laughs> that, that's yes. a, if anyone signed me, it would be I would be a Malcolm McLaren, Sid Vicious. <laughs> that would be my voice well, range. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's sort of thing. <laughs> no. You know, I mean, chanters are a significant percent enthusiastic yelling, and and there's always just the guy who makes the floor noise at the right moment. So <laughs> the I could probably thing. manage that. And there's big to do, and I think it's such a an emotionally liberating, soulful thing um, to be able to put your voice into the world. So I spend a lot of time going to people, no, you know, have a get, come along, sing the music, sing, sing in the bath, sing, sing for those things, it's all good. Trust it, it's, you know. And it's one of those things, um, it takes a bit of practice, so if you do it, you get better, even if you're not great when you start, and it's okay not to be great when you start, because, you know, why Why should we expect to be perfect to do everything up front? I think there's, a lot of things to be said about how people are taught and particularly if you're working class, if you're not naturally brilliant, no one will encourage you, you're just told it's not for you. It's like...